Uh, we, uh, no, I appreciate everyone's uh, uh, patience there. We were, uh, I guess, really last week we talked about just um, memory, following up on the memory, but also just I think we went a little more uh, in depth with how um, really use these senses in a day in, day out basis. Um, I think everything started coming together as far as the integration of the intuition, integration of just our, our history, our memory, but about how important it was to really use a memory to go back as a uh, as sort of a timeline to measure our growth, but also see our growth. And one of the things I've been consciously trying to do and, and just remind myself as a habit is just not necessarily say that I'm operating as Elohim like we established last week, but you know that we are Elohim and really just utilizing the powers that come with this identity. And really, I think the, uh, you know, I think last Monday too, Pastor, you really talked about just, um, just the awareness. And then one of the other things I brought up on that Sunday was, um, how we were trapped by by faith for a while because that just kind of you know was kind of a crutch in a way for us to not to really um, utilize and understand who we were. We were never told to um, truly find our identities, but but mainly just to uh, listen and be taught that and 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 given instructions, but never really anything that would help us truly become aware of who we were who we are and then how to use that uh, that power that we are. And so uh, when we started looking at all of the factors of of developing the eighth sense and, uh, and really being aware of a lot of the signals, once that awareness is, uh, of that sense is given to us, we tend not to overlook the signals and signs that we're given. And I think one of the biggest things that, uh, that we talked about last week that that George Clark, you know, mentioned on the first day of the calls was, and I think Barbara even touched on it a little bit, is just really controlling our emotions and how, how not having you know, understanding who we are, how these things can actually trigger us to, to operate from a state of emotion instead of be who we are and and when we are operating from emotions things tend to go haywire and we we tend to to make more mistakes more errors things tend to be uh done more based on ego based on what we want to do and, and how we view things from the outside any any questions so far uh, we uh well Go ahead. Chris. Go ahead. Else? No, just a, just as a recap, any other questions or comments? Was uh, somebody going to say something? I, I thought I heard it. No, oh, that was me. Um. Yesterday, we, we last couple of days, matter of fact, we've been talking. We've been talking about several different things. One in particular uh, is um, the idea of um, the eighth sense incorporating all of the other senses, but in a spiritual way, they become one. And and what I'm saying is that just like uh, the physical body become one with the spiritual entity that occupies it. Um, that's how the uh, senses uh, of the body becomes one with the eighth sense, uh, because it is spiritual, which means that we have heightened senses. Um, that uh, the senses are heightened more so than they've ever been. Uh, when we embrace the reality of our essence. And then we talked about um, the idea of um, intuition uh, being 
uh, the label that we gave to um, the eighth sense because we didn't know any better. And <clears throat> and we uh, used the uh, eighth sense intermittently uh, without even knowing it. And that is the case of the examples that we gave about cars, knowing a car is going to turn in front of you or change lanes. Or uh, I, I should have um, unlocked the door. I knew somebody was coming, that kind of stuff. Uh, those labeled intuition, and that's the label we gave to what is actually the, the, um, the eighth sense. And we also... Um, we also talked about uh, the energies that were engaged uh, that were um, engaged in during the um, crossing of the Edmund Pettus, Pettus Bridge in relationship to um, people in Ukraine uh, walking up to um, Russian soldiers uh, who could kill them on the spot, but but not being afraid of it. Where does that come from? We talked about that. Uh, Yesterday as well, and I'm sure there are things that that I'm uh, missing that we also spoke of. So, uh, if anyone would like to add to this, I would appreciate it. But I want us to be uh, to to um, at the very least have a gist of what we've talked about uh, in the last couple of days. So, is there anyone who will um, like to add? Would add to this? Not just like to, but would you do it, please? Hey, Pastor, it's Ron. Um, one of the, the final things we said, and, and, and this is something I want to add that we didn't really get into yesterday, but one of the final things we talked about yesterday, Charles made mention of, uh, and I, I don't remember his exact words, but he was uh, talked about uh, the, the treatment of the African versus uh, other races of people, especially the European, as far as how the refugees are treated and, and some of the things that we see and uh, how, you know, how that makes you feel. And and, and I, uh, I've been giving that some thought. Uh, I think to a degree that you need something to uh, sort of a catalyst to 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 be your beginning or something to pray about, and because we are Africans and the things we see, I think that keep us in a meditative state. And as I said, the key there is learning to control your emotions when you when you see some of these things. Uh, the other thing that we 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 mentioned yesterday though is being able to do that and still recognize what our agenda is what our purpose is and why we are here uh, and and that is to be loving kindness in the earth so even though the things we see that may anger you or cause you to be emotional you still have to have the same compassion uh, for the, the people committing the acts as as well as the victims, and, and that's that's a little hard to do. But that's you know that's a balancing act that uh, we we just kind of mentioned yesterday. Uh, you know, in in closing it, and if anybody else can remember what, where, you know, any d- details about that, or have had any further thoughts, or uh, I'd appreciate it, because uh, that's that's kind of where we ended yesterday, if I remember correctly. And I hope that summed it up. Yeah. One thing. Though. Oh, what I was going to say, one thing, Ron, when you were talking, I thought about this to you, and it's just, you know, we, we used to use the term, uh, and we used the term devil's advocate to you, and, and sometimes, and even uh, like when, we're, when we're dealing with uh, 
with with racism and how we can um you know certain things happen and we keep reflecting on on the issue that happens but at the same time we have to move forward and not have preconceived notions and really use that uh, that gut that heart that that intuition that that inner wisdom to, to guide us so that we don't close ourselves off because of everything that's happened in the past to you that you know if, if anybody has a the African has, if anybody has, you know, a right to be closed off and untrusting of, of anyone, it's us because of all the things that we've endured over time and over the years. And that was something I, I was thinking about this weekend, how, you know, how do we not think the worst in a situation before it happens or, or soon or anticipate the worst? And uh, and then I thought back. That's uh, one of the things that uh, that we were just talking about, you know. And so, and we at that point, we just have to say, uh, you know, it, it, it's okay because like, I can give you an example. This this from what you were just you know just saying, thinking of the put, put you know preparing ourselves not to think of the worst. So you know. My intentions last week was to to move Bailey in on Friday, uh, see, see George and some of my family on Saturday and Sunday, and um, and then come on back down the road. Well, obviously that didn't happen. Well, on Friday we were supposed to go up and pick up the key to her place. Um, they said as long as we got there by six o'clock. Everything should be fine, and it won't be any problem. We didn't have a lot of stuff to move, but so at three thirty, as obviously we were going to get there about four thirty instead of three thirty. Three thirty is just the time that Bailey told him that we would be getting to town. So obviously three thirty turned into four thirty. So we started calling the uh, the young lady that managed the place, and no answer. Called her twice, and Bailey said I emailed her. I'm like, well, shoot. We can't turn around because we're almost there. And for a moment there, everybody was just thinking the worst, like, well, golly, why won't she call us back? You know, this is just ridiculous. And 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 I just reminded myself at the time, like, no, we, we're not going to go there. It's just we just talked about this. I was like, well, obviously there's something that's going on. And we met the lady, and she was – on top of it before and the, the two previous times we met her. So but obviously there's got to be a reason something's going on. And my gut just kept telling me that, hey, you know what, whatever it is, it's going to be fine. So we'll figure out what we need to do. So long story short, for a brief period of time, there was some frustration and there was um, some issues of thinking, okay, yeah, you know, why would they treat us like this? But that didn't last long. When we got there, we found out the lady was suffering from seizures, and so she had a, a, a seizure episode, and and had to you know leave really early and didn't take her phone or her computer with her, so she was just you know she went home with a seizure and left us. So that you know I was like we'll just you know get a hotel and we'll be fine, and just and and I just thought okay at that minute. Everything we've been talking about has been, been put to, you know, put to a test, and and it all worked out. But, I, you know, after about five minutes of frustration, I felt like everything was going to be fine. I wasn't going to worry about it. Either way, it was going to work out, and, and, and I just let the thought leave me. And But if I had dwelled on that five minutes and let that five minutes turn into – uh, just frustration for the rest of the ride because we can't get somebody on the phone, then everybody's emotions would have been affected and, and riled up. And so uh, it's all, I guess I say, say this, that it's always good to have our thoughts preconceived for the positive to happen, the right outcome to happen, whether it be an issue of race or or whatever. We think something's going to you know, we can't put the negative first. We've always talked about just positive reinforcement, positive thinking. 
because you know whatever's going to happen is going to happen. It's for you know for so. I don't know if that just got off on what you were going at, Ron, but I just look at it even with uh, I don't anticipate, I don't walk around anticipating racism anymore. I would recognize it if it's there, but my energy, I'm, I'm really focusing on anticipating the positive interaction. And if it's something I need to recognize and be aware of, I'm going to be aware of it. And, and I'm try, that's a change also that I'm just like... Uh, doing within myself and I'm, I'm practicing and I'm trying to manage that myself too to make sure I practice and have the, the good habits of doing that consistently too so that that's my own internal way of changing that subject too when it comes to the space that I'm occupying if that makes sense yes that makes perfectly good sense that's that's a great example you all you 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 your stillness calls everyone else to to take a breath, uh, and, and I'm sure you had to deal with the voices internally as well. And uh, that's that's exactly what I'm talking about. There, the things that pop up that uh, whether it's on television or we hear others talking or something we're aware of, and you know we've. Uh, I think Pastor said, uh, uh, Ms. Bob, I can't remember, someone talked about the first six senses being our protector. And part of that protector is to, uh, it, it, it does sometimes get you emotional because that's what you we're used to. That has worked from us from infancy. Uh, we, we, we use that flare up as a, a means of comfort or getting the attention that we need and uh so you that yours was a perfect example of that and that's exactly what i'm talking about some of the things we hear uh and and see how do we handle them and you know how do we handle them and, and, and remain balanced and remembering who we are because we we can we can get thrown out of out of, out of kilter a little bit here so I think that's a that's a perfect example. <clears throat> yeah. The thing about the internal organs too that they uh that the neurosciences say that are connected with the A sense. Yes, before you before you uh, move from here, I would like to speak to a couple of things that you guys said already. Yes, sir. Um, when you talk about uh, how we usually think the worst about things. Um, we we need to give a real thought to that. Why? Because we talk about there's not anything that's really, really bad. Uh, there are events that take place, and they get our attention for a reason. And and from them, we, we um, are strengthened as opposed to uh, being weak. If we are thinking the worst, and expecting the worst, then that's that's the weakness. Um, because thinking the worst is going to happen means that deep down inside you feel like you're not going to be able to handle it or deal with it or to bear it. So um, I, I, that's one of the things that uh, we definitely need to uh, refrain from and uh, assigning the, the worst to circumstances before we know what's going on or even after we know what's going on. And the other thing I wanted to speak to is um, the idea of the African and, and race itself. Um, we reference the uh, historical things that has taken place for spiritual reasoning. Uh, we cannot, we should not, we cannot, we will not address uh, the um, things that has happened to us are uh, seeking political remedies or talk about them in a terms that would lead us uh, to listening to the politicians and how they are handling these things. If we focus on that, then uh, if we foc focus solely on that, then we are actually giving life to it, and what we have
have done, we have returned to our vomit. Um, the reason I say that is because we have made a decision that racism is um, the problem of those who are racist. We've also on, we, are, on, we also understand that the um, the concept of the African is the concept of all life um, emanating from Africa, which means that everything that is emanates from the African. So we we uh, we know that. Now I'm not saying we should not reference it, but what I am saying is that we should not focus on it because. Um, our focus is balance. Our focus uh, is uh, reconciliation. And and um, this <clears throat> the eighth sense uh, will uh, become um, vague. Will be vague to us if we make any attempt to function or to uh, uh, or to um, well, yeah, to function solely on what we see with our eyes and and, and um, deal with the six senses, or the fifth, the five senses rather, or the six for that matter. We cannot revert to that. We, we have to um, stay focused on the eighth sense, and, and that will lead us uh, to other, um, other understandings of this journey that we're on and before we know it, we will see a, a balance in humanity. We will see um, the um, actions of more and more people who have become human based upon their, their embracing the, um, the, the, the uh, loving kindness for all of humanity without regard to who they are, what they've done, or what they've said. I'm done. On, on the heels of what you just said, this is sort of a question and a comment. Do we think humanity and mankind, for whatever the season is right now, is already reaching out and crying out to understand the eighth sense? from the standpoint of there's so much talk now openly and more of an awareness of everyone's mental health and they're, uh, you know, trying to make their mental health better. And we've never had so much dialogue and conversations about that in a, in a time in this, in this world and, one of the things I, I, I noted or wrote down about the eighth sense, the, the one thing it, it helps us to be balanced enough to where, where we don't create our own anxiety over over different issues. And when we understand how things are done inside the inner strength that we have, then that helps us, uh, you know, fight the the thought of creating our own anxiety. We're, when we're, we're, when we're totally aware of our eighth sense, we're not creating our own anxiety. We're only creating solutions. And I think just overall, uh, you know, mankind in general, now everywhere we turn, there's an emphasis on everyone's mental health, making their mental health, you know, with, I don't know if it's just, just the time. And we, we hear it from, from kids, from social media, to there's an emphasis on improving everyone's mental health, whether it be in corporate America, in school, or whatever. And I think, I feel like it's a, it's a, a definite sign for us to even understand the A sense more in regards of um, us balancing, balancing out the anxiety, the different things that, that we bring up on ourselves that's created from within. Does that make sense? So hope I'm not rambling about blabbing on that one. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, this is uh, George, and I just want to, you know, just say in terms of, you know, what has been, you know, taught on the eight cents and looking at it in terms of our intuition, I think what is being shared is helping us to be able to appreciate, you know, the holistic, you know, learning, uh, you know, that is required. In, in several areas, and as I think about, you know, the, the uh, eighth sense, you know, I'm beginning to see it, you know, based on the conversations that we have in terms of the importance of the intelligences that we have, that we are now being able to incorporate it all into one, that we can appreciate, you know, the levels of um, each style. And what I meant, mean by that is, you know, yesterday when Ron was speaking in reference to rhythm and vibration, during our conversation, there were various there were various intelligences that were mentioned that I can now, you know, kind of relate to in terms of our visual, our verbal, our bodily, and 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 that rhythmic intelligences and i think what i'm seeing and what i'm feeling is that it says like all things work together for the good and so i think we're beginning or i know i'm beginning to see it more clearly now in terms of the holistic learning you know that we you know requires us to develop in all areas and i think that sometimes you know we see it you know just from one perspective but now to be able to see it how all of those uh, four intelligence work together in terms of what was said, you know, is not looking at it from how the system or the world want us to see it. I mean, it's like the news, you know, when you watch the news, you know, the first three minutes, everything is negative. However, when we're able to utilize all of our intelligences, you know, we're able to see, you know, how to be optimistic in terms of looking at something that's just negative. So I, I think that this eighth sense is teaching us or is helping us realize, you know, how wonderful and marvelous we, marvelously we are made, you know, by the intelligence that we have. So I think it's important that, like I said, you know, we can see it, you know, from the aspect of what Barbara was talking about with her dreams. I mean, it was a visual intelligence that she was experienced, but it was through someone's verbal you know, communication of that intelligence, somebody's like, you know, bodily, you know, movement in terms of moving to and from, and then the rhythmic piece. And so I think, again, as you were talking, when you were driving up to Philly, you know, you were actually applying in, in that eighth sense, all of those intelligences in a way that, you know, it may look to be, you know, uh, negative, but in the long run, you know, it came out to be good in that sense of, um, putting that holistic concept together, if that uh, resonates. But I just wanted to share those thoughts. I'm done. No, thank you. It's, I mean, and it's so, this thing is so, it's, it, it's tied to so much stuff that we've done previously and all the other senses. And when you were saying that, George, I was thinking about, you know, past in the past, we talked about someone dealing with addiction and, and you, I always remember him saying, like, you know, I don't go back to, to what the addiction is as much as you go back to the source of it, the emotions that were going through a period of time. I'm in a, a study, you know, we're doing at work, too, and we look at allergies now. They're just looking at, okay, if you had a strawberry allergy, what was your emotion the very first time that you noticed that you had a strawberry allergy when you first, you know, when you ate it? So they, they're looking at so much of how this thing is, is connected with us and just having the unbalanced emotions of different things going on and that awareness not being there about the eighth sense. How it can even just be something as simple as a physical manifestation of a food allergy? 
and how we we have so much uh, power and control of things we can learn inside of us that once we start becoming aware and understanding of us, there's so much stuff that we can avoid that manifests in us physically from from just having that that a sense control or awareness. And so I want to ask you a question. Um, yes. The, the research <clears throat> that's being done uh, is is it not focused on the physical environment that we live in, and does not uh, give any credence uh, to how we are were created in the image of Elohim. It's simply making efforts uh, to um, heal our heal ourselves or to protect ourselves without acknowledging that we are Elohim, that we are uh, the ones who, who are to bring balance to this earth. So I, 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 uh, I looked at some stuff on that, and, and what I was seeing, and you tell me if I'm right or not, is that it was geared more uh, toward um, knowing the function of, of feeling, rather, each organ in your body as opposed to um, engaging with the universe uh, for the purpose of healing mankind is more of a corporate thing as opposed to a spiritual. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, and 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 they're even the, they're taking the spiritual aspect away, and the neuroscience they're trying to explain it through emotion. And we're saying that, okay, the emotion, we understand the emotions have an impact, but they're not looking at the spiritual aspect of uh, avoiding operating or doing things from an emotion standpoint. They can label it, but they're not putting the, the spiritual aspect in there. And, so, I mean, so, so, as I'm sorry to cut you off, but if they're not putting the spiritual aspect in there, then... That means they are they are functioning from a foundation of selfishness. Correct. Right. This is all about making money. Yeah, and even yeah. some of the, the studies. Oh, I'm sorry. And some of your studies will will say that. And I mean, and some of these studies are geared to help people. But at the end of the day, you still have to help develop that that inner strength. And if you're not doing that part of of really uncovering that that inner identity that's embedded in us, there is a component missing. And and I, I can I can read I'm gonna read I'll read an excerpt from this one this is one study, and this doesn't mention anything about Elohim doesn't mention anything about you know age sense. But this is this one study. And and it just says it comes out. They can't explain it. Some things they'll tell you this is what it is, but they just don't have a. It's sort of like ulcerative colitis. We we know why certain medicines work. We just can't explain how they work. <laughs> so so this this is an excerpt from like it says without a steady internal compass, we crumble at the slightest criticism, and rage at the smallest rejection. Or we go the other direction and forget how to feel, how to empathize, how to listen to that soft, maddening inner voice that knows exactly what we should do. I know this is this because I am quite good at overreacting, even better at oblivion. So this is this is somebody stating in an excerpt how they feel and, and how they know that something's inside, but they can't explain why because they don't understand their identity. And that's the part that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks is that once we're aware of our identity, then all these other things 
you know, succumb to that. We're more aware of, of everything from an emotional standpoint. We can bring better balance. But if you don't understand the identity, you're always going to be searching. You'll understand why things um, make you feel a certain way or you know that, okay, yeah, I get it in my gut. But you can't explain it because that identity piece is missing. Um, the people and who this- the research... They are people who have no clue as to what spirituality is. And what I'm saying is that they are no different than those who took the uh, charismatic ministry to the place where it is now. Uh, Opportunity to make money, opportunity to be popular, Uh, um, not understanding that what they are doing is performing. They are not teaching. What they are doing is milking the people under the guise of um, taking care of the man of God. So what I'm saying in essence is the the studies that are being done uh, cannot uh, um, be applicable uh, to what to the spiritual aspects of it because. The root of it is totally spirit. I'm totally uh, physical. Physical. So, so we we can't afford uh, to uh, give too much credence uh, to the research that's being done because it does not um, speak to, for example, even the scientists who talks about the aura. And they talk about the energy of the aura that surrounds the body. Those same people do not make a connection between Elohim and that energy that surrounds the body. Which, what I'm saying is, the energy that surrounds the body that's called an aura is one with Elohim is one with the universe, is one with the creator. Yet, the researchers attribute that to being my aura, separate from your aura, aura. when in essence, they are not separate. They may be, they may guide us differently in terms of how we explain things or, or how we understand things. But they are not different. They are one in the same. Does that make sense? Yep, and that's that one of the things that connection that we talked about because you 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 recognize it. I, I don't I don't know how to you you recognize people now that that we come in contact with. Like I, like I said, when I first came to the Greater New Faith. So even you know Mount Calvary, I had the choice of of uh, of walking away or you know or not returning. Ron, I think he talked about his his journey from Aiken. Everybody has the choice of not returning or not uh, you know not digesting what they heard, but but you but that that connection gets made and and then the communication the the relationship gets built based off that off that connection that you that you decided. Okay, I'm. My gut says, "Hey, you know, come back." And it just and it and, and it leads you to your to a pathway back to yourself. Uh, I think you know I used the term last week, the breadcrumb. So it's kind of it's, it's a breadcrumb back back to. The true embedded identity, and you know when you choose not to, if I chose, it would have been uh, just like what you said. I would have been sitting there, but not really experiencing. Uh, you know, I'd have been kind of going to the pew every Sunday and hearing it, but not experiencing what was inside of me. You know that movement that I needed, if that makes sense. It, 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 it makes sense, definitely does. 
Um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say um, is there are a group of people on this earth who does most of most of the research, and they don't have a clue about anything spiritual. They go to they can go to church every Sunday, and they still don't have a clue about it. They take everything and make it um, fit into this physical environment. And it's like, it's no different rather than than saying that when we die, we go see Jesus. Um, yeah. When we die, we go see God. While we're on this earth, we can't be God. These are the, and the, and the scientists for a large portion of them are denied the existence of a greater being anyway. However, those who do acknowledge it, they still don't understand it. They, they understand, let me just say it, bottom line. They understand it from an evangelical perspective. That's it. They understand it from the, the, uh, the literature that we were taught from when we were in those settings. And all of the literature that we were taught from was based upon everything that the evangelicals had said. So what I'm saying is the, the, the uh, people who are doing the research, they are no different than the evangelicals in religion. They're just, they're just the same energy of, of the evangelical is with them as well because, again, it's all about making money and not about bringing balance to humanity. I've read, like I said, I read some stuff on this, and I have not read anything where um, researchers' conclusions were that uh, this is something beyond the physical that we can bring balance to humanity. I'm not. And that's yeah. Okay. That's what they and that's what they're, they're missing the connection, and 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 it goes back to what we talked about before when. I mean, and Jesus referenced it so many times. Like, it's clearly like it's. Um, we talked about the religion, and he talked about the churches, and and even in that Proverbs scripture where he talked about, um, you know, in the Proverbs we talked about your, uh, you know, there's a way that that seems right to a man, but it ends up the way to be there. It's meaning it's like you know you can. You can say what you think is right, but there's no life in the end of it because you're not understanding, you know, who you are. Where if we just, you know, we, that's why in the beginning of this whole lesson, if, if anyone tuned in the very first week, I just, you know, try to use that example that it has to be an internal thing. We have to really learn it for ourselves and not saying that someone can't tell you the truth. But we're not hearing the truth, but at some point you have to eternalize the truth so that we're not influenced by emotions or, or exterior things. And Or I read this book that someone wrote that's uh, giving me all the data, but there's no connection for it. You know, that's why it has to come from the inside, because at some point we, we get to that place where it's, it's got to be real for us and we have to know that. This is who I am. Because once you understand your identity and we feel it, there's no going back. Like you're, not, you're never going to be stripped of who you are. But if we just uh, want to follow a particular philosophy, that philosophy is only going to take us so far down the learning. It has to be an integration, just like we integrate these other senses. It has to be an integration of all these things to start the real balance inside of us. Otherwise, we're going to take bits and pieces and segments of it and not really you know, integrate all the senses so that we're operating on that that level of awareness that we need to. Because then, like you said, the people doing the research, the people that are presenting the, the writings to us, it's, it's only going to go that, that distance. It's not going to go beyond that. You know, we talk about I am, and after you say I am, who, you know, what are you putting behind that? You're just going to get to the point of where we're just kind of sitting 
and being guided by just, um, you know, basically by a philosophy. And we just agree to that philosophy and we just say, okay, I'm a Christian and we're just going to be uh, stuck in that Christian philosophy or to the point of like, you know, when we talk about faith traps you because faith is, it has its purpose, but if you can't be moved beyond that, then that's going to be the thing that's always anchoring you down and stopping you at a certain point and not allowing you to truly understand who you are because it's it's basically a crush is in a way to stop you to say, okay, this is an excuse. You got to have X amount of faith and, and that's it. But all those things um, have to be integrated together for us to get to that level of awareness. And it, the foundation, I think Kathy said it best, like once you, we have to know who we are. Yeah, and and, and that's T and you know and, and and everyone that's on the call. I think we've talked about it in the past, where you know Pastor Richard, you about you know the comedic and Christite, you know um you know teachings, you know where it talks about you know what man know thyself or man or woman know thyself, and you know as we you know look at our beginning as Ron you know speaks about you know often is that foundation where I truly believe that we're looking at it in that holistic sense now where, you know, we're able to appreciate, you know, being Elohim and, and now, you know, looking at these uh, logics of what, you know, have been taught to us in terms of greed or, or pride or, 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 or the economic piece but more importantly, you know, applying, you know, the spiritual disciplines. And I know we got away from, you know, like regulations, but talking about the spiritual disciplines for, for, for transformation. And so, you know, again, I can, you know, see, you know, the importance in terms of us, you know, really understanding, you know, just some of the terminology and, and digging deeper to, to know that it all starts from, you know, our beginning, our true self, and that's, you know, being who we are, you know, Elohim, and now applying those spiritual disciplines and all that we do. I just wanted to share those thoughts. I'm done. Um, see, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that we don't want um, to, um, we, we cannot rather get, get, um, Walk down and talk about with the uh, philosophers and and how these things work physically. We know that time is of essence. We got to look at this from a spiritual perspective. The journey that we're traveling tells us that, regardless of what we see, the thing that we must see is. The spiritual aspect of everything that we are shown, everything that crosses our pathway, everything that speaks to us, we are bound by our decisions uh, to um, uh, to commit ourselves to this journey of spirituality. And I, I don't, I don't want us to um, lose sight of this, just like we um, look at what what Jesus uh, did and said, and and and, um, and and stay there that course. That's where I want us to be. I hope that we see um, how far the Creator has brought us in terms of the wisdom that He has extended to us, especially in dealing with this eighth sense, the things that he's shown as he in regards to this eighth sense are essential. They are spiritual, spiritually essential for the journey that we are on and, and to um, understand the, the tenements of this eighth sense, like understanding that we've always used this sense, but we didn't know what we were using. Um, Understanding that we, uh, we we have been brought into this earth to deliver humanity 
from an animalistic mindset. And and now we are on the precipice of seeing the um, inherent power to do that that was imbe- that is embedded in our creation. And also to understand that we we are concept I'm sorry, races are conceptual. And 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 I don't like to use uh, races because that leads us to a place of politics and and and, um, and um, semantics. I rather just look at it based upon the origins of life and based upon the reality that we, when we function as we were created to function, it is then that we begin to uh, influence the, man, the mindset of everyone in this earth. And at some point, the ones who are doing this scientific research and, and making um, these, uh, as I said, philosophical um, statements about what they see, even their mind uh, will be shaped by what we are putting in the, um, in the macro. So anyway, I, I hope I'm not rambling. I'm done. Any questions? No, no. I have a little... Yeah. Go ahead, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, uh, this was kind of going to be kind of be like the the, the next phase of a question and a and a thought that I was going to last week when it comes to the what we have to do and you know from uh, transitioning from the memory to I was going to ask Pastor to kind of like uh, talk about what he initially thought in the past of being ordained because part of this too is that we mentally have to uh, ordain ourselves with with it, it comes i'm trying to get how to put this up. we have to kind of ordain ourselves to get to that you know we say okay we we know our identity and part of that knowing that identity is sort of a, a self ordaining process of um, of the status we were given. And I was going to ask Pastor to just to kind of touch on the the part of being on you know the, what man's vision of being ordained is, and and I kind of wanted to go into that. But before we, if you had something on based on what was said before we go on that, Ron, please. Please go ahead and say it. Okay. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm going to start by asking a question. Have you all noticed that your meditations have changed? The meditations, it, 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 if yours are like mine, don't look the way they used to. Um, meaning... You you mentioned memory uh, s and and when I use that, uh, what I see now is different. Meaning that these are different than a mantra or looking into a flame or uh, those type of things are are uh, to me have always had limitations. Uh, what I see now is my meditations offer me a journey. They're never ending, which tells me that the things that we are seeking, the spiritual things that are out there that are available to mankind are endless, as the universe is endless, that the spirituality has no bounds. And when I look at it from that perspective, the thing that brings me back is me because the meditation is open to me. So what am I saying? I'm saying we, we, every day we're entering now into a place 
that we can only be sure of one thing, and that is a new place of awareness will be available to us. Whether we see it or not is up to us, but there will be something else there that will lead us further. Uh, the things you're talking about with science, they've reached their limitation. The expectation or the things that we talk about can never happen because of their mindset, because of their goal, because of their desire. Uh, and, 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 and on the other side of that, we are reaching a place where our lessons and conversations and, and the things that we discuss can no longer be defined as this is A, B, and D. Uh, we, we can only speak about these things from a place of experiencing them. And we bring those experiences together. The thing that George and S said that I heard was through their meditations, they are able to go to a positive place and go to a, so no matter what the situation comes out, you are determined to see it in a positive light. And, and that, is what brings you answers. It's not that the answers were there. The answers were there because you brought the answers there. Your positiveness uh, from that, from your places of meditation is what draws that. And that is something that I still need to work on. So I'm listening to, to, to where we are and we know that uh, the thing that you call memory is just the beginning, just as religion is the beginning, just as faith is the beginning. It is a, to take us to a, 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 a get us started on a, a journey that we, that is it, continuous. So as we change the two-edged sword here, that I see anyway, that as we change, as we grow, and we try to understand it and 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 focus on that new awareness, we are changing the world as well. And the thing that, uh, at least for me, that has at times been confusing is the changing of the world doesn't always look like something that I recognize or that I thought it would look. But as I, I, I think S said, this is all a part of the journey. So I, 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 I like what, what we're saying. I, I, I see this uh, I, I see this as, you know, the, the, the focus, the, the, the eighth sense really, to me, speaks of the transformation and the desire of man to become Elohim and recognize that he's Elohim, not just to say it, but to recognize it and to practice it, to put this thing to work. And and uh, that's that's where we are now, and that's exciting to me because as as was I'm saying is the journey, the 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 meditations have no ending; they're open, and and that is that to me is a good thing. Where what what, what is open to? I don't know. I, I don't have the slightest clue. But just listening to what you guys are saying and your experiences, that's what you're describing to me. And that's what I'm feeling internally with my own experiences. But anyway, I'm done. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ron. I, I appreciate that. Because even when you were talking, I was just thinking last night I was uh, you know, driving back. And I really, you know, like I said, just, just thinking a lot. I, can't, I couldn't tell you how I got home. I just just thinking and, and riding, and I remember at one point I was scared because I was like, "Oh man, I you take so many different detours," and I was like, "Oh man, I might be going the wrong direction." For a minute there, I was just so lost in this thinking, and then I saw a sign. I said, "Okay, no, I'm in Durham." So I said, "Okay, I'm hit. You know, Durham, twenty minutes, twenty miles down the road." So I'm like, okay, I'm good. But and I was just thinking about that. Just reminded me last night when I was thinking of that with. Pastor said uh, a couple of weeks ago about our future is behind us because I really, you know, like just my thought pattern, I just wasn't really worried about 
wasn't really worried about no timeline. I just just kind of driving, and it's like when I saw the signs, like, okay, yeah, Durham, twenty three miles. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm because we take so many turns, but that right there had made me flash back to just thinking, okay, we can't put the emphasis on a timeline of, of when we want things to happen to kind of shape the future because he said that our future is in the past. So I just, you know, I just think back, you know, of, of just really I was just thinking back of all the things we talked about the last couple of weekends and then, you know, a couple of hours later, okay, now I'm at this point actually on the road. So just, you know, our thoughts kind of, we kind of shape things with uh, just, you know, that memory of, of reflecting back and going backwards in a timeline allows us to see all the growth that's happened with us now and also that's ahead of us. So it's, it's crazy how those things kind of come together when you, when you're forced not to think about how you want something to be done at a certain period of time or what you want to have done or accomplished when you just start thinking back and then so much happens in between that period that you're, you know, like you just, things happen so fast with just reflecting backwards, if that makes sense. But I see you back. You, you, you also re- remind us, sorry, as for cutting you off, and I'm going to let you keep talking about this because you're saying it all along. The the part I forgot to mention is what we're doing to time, how how fast things are speeding, uh, uh, have sped up, and it, in your own journey, and you can see it in a universal way. But, but I just want to add that part, because that's what you're describing. Yeah, because, I, I mean, by allowing myself to follow that bread come breadcrumb back trying to go backwards into who I am and accepting that it's just like everything when and then when you kind of like you you come back out of that reflection down that timeline it seems like so many things have moved forward you know for you because none of the other stuff that really mattered you know that that reflection of going backwards and trying to really go back to who you are and, and and that embedded person that none of the stuff that that happened in between while you're thinking about that matters. So I mean, like just me trying to think back over the last couple of weeks because I wasn't able to really read and didn't really have any uh, recordings to listen to. I just wanted to kind of go back and reflect. And that reflection just kind of like it just eliminated so many hours of driving. And I realized like, okay, now okay, I'm here. I'm closer to home than I am. It didn't really. Because at that point, I didn't really care what time we got back home because everything that we had set out to do was accomplished and done. So that part didn't really matter. But now I'm just reflecting back and trying to, okay, let me go back and think about all the lessons and, and you know, and not necessarily what I missed, but just prepare myself in a way that, okay, I need to think about this. And, and it just kind of propelled me forward. It's like, okay, that it just took a big chunk of time out of that drive because I was just reflecting back on what we had talked about and everything else that we were involved in and, and all the conversations and just replaying it in my head was sort of a form of meditation for me, just trying to uh, organize the thoughts in, 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 a, in, a, in a straight line, if that makes sense. And it just, the next thing you know, you move forward so you know so much further than what you what you thought. And then I, I just you know when I start thinking about gaining a certain because we keep talking about the a status to you of uh, our identity and understanding what you need to be in a given moment of time and really understanding that that status that kind of sacred power that that we have when we understand that and I equate that to just uh, we get to the point where we're we're salt with self ordaining ourselves to be who we are and we uh, I mean all, all these things kind of come in into play and the terms we use and we understand uh, the I am and we the, the ten utterances it's almost like we're 
ourself or ordaining ourselves to to accept in that status. It's like we we got to get to that point. We accept it too, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, it does make sense, and, and it sounds like too. Uh, we, we're getting to a point where I, I think about what Jesus said, and and his actions uh, were more for the universe. It it wasn't Ron concentrating on Ron's world. His awareness was of mankind and that was his focus and and uh, I think that's where you know that's the journey we've been trying to achieve and I think we're closer to that than 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 we realize that and and, and what that means to me is uh, and I let you get into the ordained part of it because I'm anxious to hear that, but it, I, I think it, you know, all these other little details and the politicians and all the other things that we pay attention to, I think that's about over as as those things are creating some type of emotion in you and making you feel some kind of way. I think we're moving to a place where we will uh, focus on the things that we ha- have set out to become and, and put in motion in the earth. And uh, so, yeah, I- I'm really anxious to hear that part of it. Yeah, where I'm, I guess where I'm going at with this right here, you know, I'm in a fraternity. Uh, we've been initiated. Man has tried to, like, we've tried to make so much of this stuff physical representation and you just can't do it. But we've tried to bring people into certain organizations by ceremonies. We've sworn people in. We've had these initiation periods from different organizations. Um, what do you want? You want to you want to be this and belong to this certain group? All these things we've tried to physically manifest into some sort of a initiation period or some sort of uh, this is the steps you have to go through to uh, to be a minister, to be a pastor, to uh, to uh, be a governor, to, to whatever, you know, to be a mason, all these things that man has tried to like manipulate and we've tried to like make these functions. This is the steps you have to go through to get there. And I, I, you know, I'm starting to see and see like the only or you know, the, to be ordained, you, you you have to be self-ordained first because you have to really like that meditation, that that self-discipline that we talk about. We keep talking about the self-discipline, and we, instead of like using, you know, that's the term we you know, so we really need to use because that discipline of aligning ourselves up to, to utilize this ascent. It's really kind of a self ordaining process. Um, and I, I'm, and I'm trying to tie it in, just trying to make sense of it. Go, go ahead, Pastor. I want, before you go into that, I, I want ordaining is, is the, the, when you are ordained, that means that you have been given the authority to do something. Now, we, we, we don't, when I was ordained, I had to go through a catechism process first. And that means asking us questions about the scriptures and doctrines of, of Baptist doctrine, etc. When I was ordained, that ordination pure ceremony was giving me the authority to function as a minister slash pastor if the calling came and to hold to the doctrines that have been put forth by the Baptist church. When a Methodist is ordained, the same process, it's the same thing. They are, they are being given the authority to function as a Methodist pastor, 
elder, etc. Now, we we are we are not self ordained. We have been granted the authority from birth, from creation, from the beginning. We have always been ordained. We have always been uh, decreed to have the authority to function as Elohim and, 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 and be human at the same time. The functioning as Elohim is what makes us human. Therefore, those who are not functioning as Elohim or do not believe they are Elohim, it does not mean that they are not ordained. They are ordained. They just don't know it, and they don't know what it means. The right. uh, rightful thing of ordination <laughs> is that it locks you into a system. And if you don't verbally leave or break with that system, that system always has authority over you, and you will not move beyond that system in the way you function and in the way you understand and the way you present things. As, when you spoke of the masonry, when you are or raised as a mason, the, the only way you can leave masonry is to demit. Um, when I left masonry, I demitted. Why? Because I did not want that energy with me. I did not want um, that authority with me. I made a clean break with it. And that same break I had to make with um, Christian doctrine. And I don't say Baptist because it's Christian doctrine that, that I had to break with because if I did not do that, it had authority over me. And now that I see it retrospectively, what I see is I could not embrace the ordination that I had already received from the beginning if I functioned under the ordination of men. And, 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 and what this ordination of men or this... Um, this, uh, um, what, what you call it, the, um, when you're going into a fraternity. The initiation. The, the, there, there are no initiation rites with uh, or the ordination from the beginning. Initiation rites are written by men in order to control your, your control you. Right now, those who ordain me will say that I am out of control and I am more in control now than I've ever been. They would say that I am blasphemous and that I am, I am um, a disgrace to the doctrines and they would rescind my ordination. It doesn't matter to me. Even when they when uh, it was threatened to take my license and to do that, the one who did it didn't have the authority to do it. But I said to them, it doesn't matter. I don't need your permission to do what I do. I've already gotten permission when I was called. That's, that's what ordination is. We are already ordained. We All we do is embrace it. We have the authority to do what we do. Questions or comments? And, and I guess that's the term that I was trying to get us in the mindset of that we have to accept that status, that it's already like it's, we try so hard to make things so complicated and, and get into a, from point A to point B, but we have to accept that the status is already there. We have to accept that status and acknowledge it. And I, and I guess that's um, moving from the mindset of, an, I guess, trying to say self-ordained. But what I guess in summation of what you just said is that we as the individual have to accept the status that we are, the power has already been granted to us. 
we have to get to that to that to that point of accepting the the status and gaining the sacred function of it. And I, and I think you know I, we talked about this back and forth for years and years about the Melchizedek person in the Bible, but really that sim, symbolic also of Jesus accepting the status of king and priest at the same time that he was merely just uh, he wasn't going through any kind of initiation or anything like that but what he was acknowledging was I'm accepting my status and the same that's why I think the Melchizedek aspect was brought up with him was brought with Abraham is that there's evidence there that all these guys all these people in Spiritually significant was they were accepting their status at that point that they weren't necessarily being ordained in an order of anything. It's more so that they understood the power and the presence that they were given, and they were accepting that status of where they were. And I think that's that's where I'm getting to the point of we have to accept that status, just like Jesus accepted his status as king and priest. We accept the status that we have, that we are Elohim, and it's, like you said, the power is there. And I, I guess that that was a good way of, of how you, you know, tied or put it to to that point. I guess from where I was trying to get. To. Thank you, sir. Um, are there questions or comments? And, the, and that's the function of mentally and, and meditating brings us to that point of of accepting that it's it's a it's a, it's, it's, it's a, and it's not something that just happens instantly. I don't want somebody to think it's like, but you you just got to accept it, accept our status and function. And like you just said, you just repeated before, it's already there for us. And just like you're, you know, man will have us try to go through a initiation or order and we have to, you know, remove ourselves from certain energy. And that meditation of accepting the status that we already have, that we're Elohim. And that's that's where, I, I mean, for years and years, we talked about just, um, you know, the significance of the Melchizedek. And it was at that point that they accepted their status as king and priest because he was the the first one to be king and priest. And it was, it was sort of a, a sacred function, a uh, purity, however you want to look at it. But when Jesus, he said he, in the order of Melchizedek, it was just the confirmation of his power and he was accepting the status as king and priest. And, and and each time that that's mentioned in the Bible, which is a few and far between, it was uh, the individual, though, internally Jesus accepting it. And that's something that we just can't, we, you can't be, and that's where the aspect, I guess I was tying it in, Rev, was saying the ordained, the self-ordained, is that we really can't be ordained from the outside. It's more of an internal acceptance of, that status and power in who we are. I, I guess that was my response to what you were saying. Right. You're right. And that's a lot. I mean, that's really, I'm saying it, but there's really a lot to think about. I mean, like when we're meditating and, and saying and accepting is two different things. It's a lot easier to say it than it is to do it. And I'm not just talking about the ordination, accepting and embracing that. I'm talking about embracing the reality of who you are. And that's my function of my meditation, my thoughts, or when I'm trying to, like, even it's driving, like, I try to, you know, I'm trying to get my head wrapped around it. Yeah, that is it. I mean, and feel it. And I, I've accepted it, but just it's, it's not just a, it's not a one and done thing. It's always like we talked about before. It's a constant evolution of accepting it. 
and that that's um uh, that's how I'm moving forward with my meditation and my thought process uh is really just accepting that identity and accepting that status and just constantly evolving into it and that's just the honest uh, honest answer statement how you want it's just a constant i understand it, you, you can say it but it's just constantly evolving and accepting that status any any other comments or questions No comment. I no, no question. Rather, I, I my mind automatically went to uh, Enoch walking with God. Uh, maybe that should have been walking as God alone. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I I see him more in that role than what I originally thought that he just left the earth. I think it had it it. it carries a lot more to it just as what you're saying uh yeah i, I, I guess when we as from i mean just to compare us to 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 jesus you know because jesus we, we gotta remember that he was on that journey for 33 some odd, you know some odd years and there was a constant evolution day in and day in that, that he did that he accepted the status you know and you know we're we're in this form and this flesh, and and also we're still balancing the, the two natures, and it's a constant accepting it daily who you are, accepting it daily who you are, and, and it sounds simple, but it's really not. It's uh, it's it's just the constant meditation, accepting it. We talked about just sharpening our intuition and the memory and learning at the moment of how to interject, all those things are just you constantly accepting it and using it day in, day out, you know, you know, not functioning because we're not going to say function. We're saying, you know, being disciplined in who we are day in and day out. And it's just a constant evolution. And, and that's what, you know, the, the examples that Jesus talked about and, and the, you know, how he showed us, how he handled himself in different situations, um, how he dealt with the priests who were there, how he dealt with religion, um, you know, and, and how he foreshadowed what was what was coming. It's just he operated in his identity of who he was day in and day out, and and that's all that's all we can do. But it's, it sounds easier to say it. But just actually operating and, and making those connections, utilizing this age sense to help us evolve and move forward. That's where that's where we're headed. And it's kind of like you know, uh, you know, you could pick out that one aspect of Abraham, the one aspect of David. But you know, you got to look at their their evolution is really the thing that that really mirrors us. Because you know we we got to stop look you know we can't going back to your time aspect you can't look at things in the Bible as one moment in time we have to look at ourselves as as evolving as, as you know as Elohim and it's just not one you know it's not one 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 moment in time it's it's a constant evolution of becoming and and that's what the the the, the eighth sense it, it constantly. You know, it integrates all those other things. It's like a constant integration of the other senses. And then as we deepen our wisdom and our understanding, it just constantly evolves. And it just uh, it, it brings us more and more in the line of who we are. But it's not a one and done. And I know we've said that before. And It's not just uh, that you've reached a certain point. And you've made it. It's just it's a constant who we are. Yeah, um, you know, St. As as you're speaking, um, you mentioned you know in terms of becoming, and one of the um, 
you know, African terms of kepera, you know, speaks about that process of becoming. And as you were, you know, just sharing your experience in terms of, um, you know, driving back south, you know, from, 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 you know, from Philly, I uh, traveled, you know, with you in my mind and my spirit in terms of the times that I was with, you know, you all and those on the phone, you know, when we meet, you know, uh, you know, as teachers and we all are, but I used to just think about my travels, you know, where I could, you know, be there, you know, in the presence, you know, of everyone and the drive eight miles, you know, to drive eight hours or whatever, you know, just reflecting on I am Elohim and how, you know, just continually, repetitionally just speaking, but going through the journey as I reflect, you know, looking at the sun, the stars, you know, looking at all of that, that transpired through that journey. And it just brought me back to that remembrance in terms of being able to appreciate, you know, you know, the process of becoming. And so as I look at it now, is just another way of us being able to appreciate, you know, our time together in whatever way that we're able to, you know, see that it's purpose. So, you know, seeking um, and, and, and just again, you know, having that, you know, memory, you know, is just an awesome, you know, time of reflection and so I just, you know, wanted to share that thought because, I mean, as many times, like you said, we travel on the road or we're doing things and we don't quite see it at that time. But now that, you know, you bring some things back, you know, to our remembrance and how you're teaching and your thoughts and, and, and where we all are and what we all are saying, you know, that's the power, you know, that we have, you know, when we get on, you know, these calls or at the same time to listen, because that's just a powerful you know, again, not just a mantra, but an affirmation. I am Elohim. And I think, you know, if I had to repeat that, you know, 80 times, but going through the actions and going through the flow of it, you know, we're being, um, you know, fed in a way where our intuition is actually grasping it, you know, to the point that we're walking in the authority of who we are, Elohim. So I just wanted to share those that thought in terms of your timeline, uh, ST, because it would just amazes me that when I put my thought in that way, and next minute, you know, f- from South Carolina, I'm in Philly. And just like that, I couldn't just see how those eight hours went that fast, but just being in the presence of um, who we are. So I just wanted to share that thought. I, mean, I, no, I appreciate it, for sure, because for sure, each time it's a different drive and it's a different process but we measure it from where you start to where you end up. But each time is different. Like I think I, the four, the last four trips up there, I think I've come back a different way, all, a different way to all four times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, and this, even from the mental part of, you know, of a journey, it's never the same. So it's that you just, but you know, like we, we, we measure that growth by reflecting back. And that's, um, uh, and you know you measure where you are right now from where you you know where you came from, but it's it's not been the same. Each each trip has been different, and even that can transfer over into the spiritual aspect of it too. Yes, everybody may get to a certain point, but our trips encompass different events or different things along the way. You know, I'm I'm. I'm Yeah, go ahead, Ron. I'm just going to be brief, George, but I, I'm just saying I'm listening to what you guys are saying. And uh, as Africans, especially as men, we are not taught or, or really been given that opportunity to be uh, that confident or have that type of assurance about anything. And and what you're describing is you walking out of of, of something that you uh, started off as being hopeful about, and then you move into something strong or maybe a faith until you are in assurance. So there is no doubt in my mind that you you don't have to. I don't have a faith 
that my name is Ronald Lamar Johnson. I'm 62 years old. You you can't take that away. Uh, I I know who I am in that regard, and and so I don't have to have faith in that. Uh, and and what you're describing is moving to that place of assurance that. The, you know, if, if if that's where I am, that that I recognize that just as comfortably that I'm a brother and that I'm an uncle and 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 uh, I'm a friend and, and and I can operate in all those with that confidence uh, and assurance of of knowing what to do and and and, and operating in the earth, I get that comfortable with being Elohim. And when I'm there, then the emotional part that we've talked about uh, is not going to be an issue. Uh, the the uncertainty or the hesitation is not going to be an issue uh, because my assurance is there. And through those, as I, we were talking earlier, those meditations, other things, uh, you know, will include you drawing all the things that you need to you for, for to, to be Elohim. So uh, that's what I hear when I hear you guys talk about this. Uh, we, 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 we are moving to that place and, and we're moving there at a rapid speed. And, and uh, that is just great awareness, I guess. I'm, I'm just, just, just listening to this, how this is uh, concluding. Yes, I mean, and this, like I said, it's funny because, I mean, we don't, uh, we don't, uh, like, like I said, I, uh, we, we put drugs, we we sell drugs, we can tell you the, the mechanism of action, the way it works, but we can't tell you why it works. <laughs> so, they can't really tell you why certain things do what they do, but they can tell you the they can tell you the route. Um, um, I just, I mean, I can tell you to take 95 to Philadelphia, that that's the route to go. I can't tell you why you're going to encounter certain things along the journey. But I, you know, but I can just tell you that's the way you have to go. I can't tell you why, uh, why it gets you there in 10 hours instead of nine. But, you know, while you're on it, you, you know, you realize the details and all that stuff that, you know, there's just, there's just so much that we can relate to, and that goes back to that communication we talked about a couple of weeks ago. That we're comfortable, and we, you know, we know enough about each other and what we feel to where we we talk the same language, we communicate, and it's just easier for us to to communicate. Whereas someone who doesn't speak our language or it's coming at it from you know. It's going to take them a little longer, so you have to uh, communicate in their language, and eventually, you know, the communication gets better, and that connection gets you know gets better. It's easy for us because we have that connection already to uh, you know to go down this journey. But without that connection, you get a little bit of a pause, and that's why you just kind of go back to the overall. The first thing you have to do is know who you are, and you know, and it's a lot easier to to accept everything else and grow. But if you don't know who you are, like you said, you're Ron Johnson. I can't take that away from you, and it's easier for you to learn more about Ron Johnson. But you know, it's. It's just, I mean, I, I see, I see so many things that kind of flash, and and for years I know it, even with the, the melodistic part, melodistic part, I was, you know, and it's still a lot of mystery there. But just even understanding that a little more than I did five years ago, it, there's some growth to that. So we we all have that, uh, we all have that growth in us. Without without rambling on too much and. Uh, you see certain things you don't want to like jump ahead or, or miss other parts of it too. But that that connection we have because we've been so we're so used to communicating with each other 
it's it's easy to move on and understand what what the next person is thinking, or at least um, you know we're in the same ballpark and we just all have uh, our thoughts on it. And it's the same thing, but it's just like we come to the same conclusion, just just a different way there. And that that communication that was so much easier to you know because we all got a different perspective, but at the same time that communication, that history. It makes us so much easier to kind of relate to it. And any other questions or comments? Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I, like I said, I hope it wasn't too scattered, and um, but I was really just, tr- you know, trying to to make the connection. And like I say everything happens for a reason, and. and um, just constantly trying to evolve and, and open up and just, uh, you know, meditating on who we are. Uh, but if no other questions or comments, I think it's a, I think it's a good stopping point for tonight. Um, well, I appreciate everybody. And I'm going to go back and, uh, listen to what I missed there too, but uh, I feel like it's, uh, <laughs> Like I said, everything kind of happens for a reason. It kind of makes you, you know, regroup and just you know dig a little deeper and understand a little more. Because I saw a few more things tonight that I didn't really look at before. Thank you, Ash. Thank you, sir. I uh, thank you, Ash. Before you you got you get off the line, um, would you um, stop the recording? <laughs> 